So we put out a, an announcement that there was going to be a course on data analysis and biodiversity. That's awfully, awfully broad. Way too broad. Um, some of you were present back in February when we did an ecological niche modeling course. That was a easy course to do because it was something that colleagues and I had done many times before. This course is kind of an injustice to everybody involved because what we did was we picked out five topics, essentially five uses to which biodiversity data can be put. We don't have funds to make possible five separate courses, but clearly we could do a separate course on each of these topics. Maybe we could take Monday and Wednesday and combine them into a single day or single week's course. But we could clearly do a week on macroecological analyses. We could clearly do a week on uh, conservation prioritization. Don't have that much in the way of funding. And so we decided on this crazy model. As I told you, every one of these courses is an experiment. But this crazy model is essentially, it was going to be five experts, five days. And, well, one of the experts couldn't make it at the very last minute, and so now it's me for two days. Sorry, guys. Um, it's going to be probably frustrating for everybody, which is to say if you're really interested in macroecological analyses, you're going to want four more days of lectures with, with Tiago and, and uh, interaction with him and, and uh, practice on the techniques. And all I can say is you've got one full day of, of Tiago and a bunch of other days where you can talk with him and deal with things more informally. Same goes for Rafa, same goes for Adolfo. He'll be sick of me, so, so I'm not worried about you not getting enough of me. Um, the point is, this is maybe reading the first chapter of five separate books. And for that, I apologize. It's not going to be deep enough. But my hope is that this at least serves to give you kind of a panorama of what the field can do, give you a link into at least one expert in each of these fields, and hopefully it'll awaken some interest for further exploration. So apologies in advance for the structure of this course. It's kind of the best that we could do. Um, why do we need a data analysis course? We want to understand global biodiversity, things like what are its patterns, where are the hot spots, what are the key areas for conservation action, what are key areas for further study, uh, what factors underlie or possibly generate biodiversity foci, et cetera, et cetera. That's essentially the sort of question that's driving this course. So I'll give you some examples. Um, here is Conservation International's hotspots. Okay? I love to pick on them, don't I? And at first glance, let's imagine I'm a you know, billionaire. I look like one, right? A billionaire sitting in New York City in my Fifth Avenue apartment. And I'm thinking, I'd like to do something for biodiversity conservation. Where shall I spend $100 million? And so Conservation International comes up with this map and says, look, those are the hotspots. Pick one. And so maybe you say, hmm, you know, my, my grandmother was Armenian, so let's go to the Caucasus. Or maybe you say, I've always loved Australia. There's a hundred million dollars. What are the hot spots? Who decided what the hot spots are? Is it really true that the Congo Basin is not a hot spot? 
or the Amazon basin. I don't get it. What goes into these? Okay? A lot of what this is, is marketing. Which is to say, a lot of what this is, is good strategy where that billionaire on Fifth Avenue might want to toss his or her money. What the hotspots are apparently is plant diversity plus threat. It's some mixture. Nobody ever tells us how you mix them. Is more threatened more important than more rich? Don't know. Okay, why the Andes and not the Amazon? Don't know. That's why we need to do the analyses. Okay, you guys have questions as academics, as students, as advisors to policymakers, right? If you take the global initiatives recommendations, you're also following their motivations. So, to say that another way, many of these biodiversity information products, like that map I just showed you, aren't really based so much on data. And many of them mix priority with feasibility or with history. So really we want to be able to get the pure picture. Maybe what's the picture of diversity? And what's the picture of endemism? And what's the picture of loss in the past two decades? And what's the potential for loss in the next two decades? We want to be able to think about all that stuff multidimensionally rather than just being given one single map. Because that's when we can really think about how diversity interfaces with threat, how endemism interfaces with diversity, et cetera, et cetera. I already showed you this diagram. Um, I just wanted to kind of point to some of the things that we're going to do in this in this course. Um, we're going to do a bunch of things that are about how species relate to their environments. We're going to do a bunch of things about geographic distributions of species, conservation management strategies. So we're going to kind of cover a bunch of the linkages in this diagram. And so what are we trying to do? Trying to cover five topics, inventory completeness, regional analyses of diversity and endemism. I'll do the inventory completeness. Adolfo will do the analyses of diversity and endemism. I'll come back with a piece on gap analysis in biodiversity surveys. Thiago will do a, a day on macroecology and space, spatial ecology. And Raphael will do a section on, on conservation planning. I hope that you guys will make the most of the opportunity. These guys are good, OK? I, I'm really, really happy that they accepted the invitation to come here to South Africa um, to my home for these two weeks and uh, talk with you guys, work with you guys, take advantage of it. and. The other objective is we're trying to capture everything digitally. So please put up with the cameras. Don't get as frustrated with them as Kate and I do. Um, it's so that this training can go beyond this room. So here's kind of a schema of what we're going to do in the course of this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, don't need to go into the details, but essentially, I've, I've rearranged this already a bit. Essentially, after our morning tea break today, we'll start into a bunch of things about how to evaluate how complete an inventory is. 
okay? Then Adolfo, then me again, then Thiago, and then Rafael. Our days will work this way. Um, we want to arrive here 8.30, that's why we're leaving the hotel at 8.15 or 8.10. Two hours of lecture, and then, in theory, a half hour of break. Um, usually what it means is two hours and 15 minutes of lecture, and then 15 minutes of break. We have a very convenient situation here where the break is 20 meters that way, um, so it's not all that bad. Then we have another hour and a half of lecture, and then we have lunch, which is also right here. Another hour and a half of lecture, another half hour break, in theory, and then a final hour of lecture. Um, when I say lecture, it's a combination of all sorts of things. Today I have essentially an experiment that we're gonna do all together as, as a big group. Um, and we'll see what each, each person wants to do, but in some cases it can be with your own data. In some cases it can be with data that we'll give you. Um, a special point for this course is um, make sure you've got all of the different programs installed and running. So the critical ones are Estimate S for today, Zonation for Friday, Sam for Thursday. Adolfo, you just kind of want them to have everything, right? Um, the hardest one for Adolfo's day is a GIS program. So then, these are your experts. Um, Rafael and Thiago from University of Goiás in Brazil. Um, Brazil's kind of my third home in the world, and every time I go to Brazil for an extended period, I end up going to Goiás for a week, and I have a great time, a great bunch of people there. Uh, I think you could make the assertion that it's the or one of the best macroecology programs in the world right now. So it's, a, it's really fortunate that we've got both of them here. And then the other picture, the important part is that's my granddaughter. Uh, but Adolfo is her godfather. So Adolfo is a professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. Um, and he and I have worked together for 25 years, 20, something like that. It's our silver anniversary. So. <laughs> We're expecting the next baby. <laughs> More importantly, here's Kate, whom you've all met at least via email, uh, but Kate basically makes this whole thing work. And that's me, that's my granddaughter a little bit earlier, later, uh, older. There's another granddaughter now, but I don't have a picture of her yet. Um, but anything that you need, anything that we can fix, we will do our very best. So, that kind of finishes up my introduction. It was long-winded. Look at that. It's 10.30 and our tea break is at 11. Um, but what we really want to do now... Oh, come on.